Hey, what's up? My name is Nick and welcome to The Can of Art. In this video, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence art, or the art which AI can generate using text prompts, kind of like this. All the images that you are seeing are generated by artificial intelligence simply by typing in a couple of words. And then the AI searches the internet for tera mega giga petroflops of information to come up with an image based upon your request. And recently this power has been given into the hands of us normal mere mortals which want to create something that looks really stunning. And in this video I'm going to show you how to get access to all of this crazy technology using an app called Midjourney for free. Let's jump into it. Midjourney is a very simple website. You don't even need to download any apps because all of the processing power to generate these images happens on their servers. You only need to type in some words and see the outcome. You will need to download Discord or use Discord in order to use this application. So the first thing that you need to do is go ahead to open midjourney.com. Here you'll be greeted with two main buttons. One of them is join the beta, the other one is sign in. If it's your first time using this application, click join the beta. It is going to forward you to a different application called Discord, which Midjourney uses as a chatbot in order to deliver your images. Here you'll be able to sign up or sign in if you already have an account. Now, although this might look a little bit overwhelming at first, I assure you it's quite simple. If you look to the left, you're going to see there's a bunch of rooms over here. And if you go ahead and click on any one of these newbie rooms, in this room, there's going to be a bunch of creators just like yourself using this application. If you scroll down to the bottom where it says message, you're able to type in a prompt. Type in forward slash and then imagine. Then press enter. Now it's going to ask you for the prompt. Here you can type anything you want. For example, I'm going to type in a realistic cute cat wearing a hat and hit enter. You're going to see now that ours is highlighted in orange. And you're going to see that our creation is going to push upwards as other creators input text problems of their own. And a way to avoid that is to scroll up and find your image, effectively pausing the feed. Now we just need to wait for it to finish rendering and when it'll be done, it's going to drop down to the very bottom of the feed. And when you find your image, scroll back up just a little bit in order to pause the feed again. You can have a look at the image by clicking on it. And also you're going to see that there's going to be four U's and four V's corresponding to one, two, three, and four. U means upscale, while V means variation. So if you want to enlarge this image, U1, you click U1. If you want to have variations of this image, you click V1. And if you don't like any of these images, you can click the refresh button over here. Now let's scroll down and see what we got. So variation one of the image gave us these results. Upscaling of image one gave us this result. And if we like this result, we can go ahead and click upscale to max, giving it the maximum possible resolution and details. So let's go have a look at the difference between the upscaled version and the upscale to the max version to see the difference. And you can see here that not only did it make the image actually bigger, but it also added some detail. For example, take a look at the hat, it added a picture of a flower in the upscaled max version. Also some details around the nose and so on. Sometimes I actually prefer the upscaled versus the upscale to the max version, but that's just the way it is. So there you have it. In just under three or four minutes, I've managed to explain to you how to use this app because it's very simple. So you can now go ahead and create your own images. Keep in mind that this is a trial version and Midjourney gives you about 20 GPU minutes of usage. So the way that they use it is like this. It's not 20 images, but 20 minutes of GPU power of processing the images. And it takes about one minute per image. So you get about 20, maybe 25 images. So if you want to have more images, you need to go up to the paid version. And let me explain to you how that works. Let's go back to midjourney.com. And this time we're going to go ahead and press sign in. Then Discord is going to ask you to authorize the Midjourney bot in order to access the system and is going to bring you to your profile page. Here you can see all of your images that you have created already. So if you lose them, that's a great way to find them. If you look at the left menu over here, scrolling down, you're going to see manage subs. Clicking here is going to bring you to the Manage Subscription page. We have two options. You have the basic membership, which has limited use of 200 images. That's 200 minutes to be exact. And then you have the standard membership, which is $30 per month, which gives you unlimited personal use. But you see there's a little asterisk over there. And the asterisk is because they give you 15 hours of GPU usage in fast mode. And there's also a relaxed mode, which is unlimited use, but slower. And I'll get to that in a second. 
Now, I'm not sponsored by Midjourney in any sort of way. In fact, they don't even have a referral link. But I went with a $30 option because you end up using this stuff a lot. It's a lot of fun and 15 hours, I ended up using it about one week before I realized what the relaxed mode means. I also recommend you download Discord on your computer and on your mobile phone. That way you can generate AI images directly from your mobile device. So let's go have a look at the Discord and all the features that the Pro Membership offers. And also let's talk about the commands to get you to the best results possible. This is what Midjourney looks like on the Apple Desktop Discord app. We're already familiar with the uh, newbie rooms over here, uh, but if you scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see there's general rooms now. And they are the same, but also reserved for only for paying customers. Uh, if you go up to the very top, you're going to see here there's home. And under home, there is a Midjourney bot. And this is the client area that you're really looking for. Now, here, you can type in your prompts and it's reserved just for you. There's not going to be any other users bombarding you with their imagery. This is a one-to-one -one image generation platform. So that's a big plus of having a paid subscription. Let's go ahead and start off with some images. I'm going to go type in forward slash imagine. Right, and then let's just have a single simple prompt. Let's go with kitten. Great, now it's giving me an image of four kittens over here. Let's have a look. Great, but as you can see, it's all squares. And if you want to make it more of a landscape or portrait, I'm going to teach you how to do that next. So I'm going to type in forward slash, and because that already remembers my previous command, which was imagine, I'm just going to press enter. Now I'm going to write kitten, same as before, but then this command comes into play, dash dash AR for aspect ratio, space, 16, by nine and let's hit enter okay now you can see that this image is in a 16 by 9 format in landscape mode let's go ahead and do the same thing but in portrait mode so dash enter kitten dash dash ar space 9 by 16 enter and as you can see now we have it in uh, portrait mode. So all the images are always different and especially if you give just one single word, the AI is going to generate something of its own imagination. But how stylized that animation is or picture is, um, you can kind of control it, um, but dash dash S for style. Um, I'll show you what that does. So forward slash uh, imagine, then kitten, then dash dash S. 650 is the most basic one. You're asking the AI not to go into imaginary frenzy. Just just focus on the kitten. And let's go with dash dash AR, um, 16 by 9. All right, now it's finished. And you can see it went all over the place on this one. Uh, but I did try to keep it to the cat image. So let's go to the opposite spectrum of that and type in dash uh, prompt and then kitten. Dash dash s space 60,000 is the maximum. Uh, dash dash ar 16 by 9. If you typed in a command wrong, for example, I forgot to put a space after the ar, it is going to notify you. All right, and then put a space after the ar. Let's go. All right, so now that it's finished, let's have a look. And you can see the AI really had a lot of fun imagining this stuff. I mean, the first image has even nothing to do with a kitten. The other two are mystical creatures of the forest. So you get to tell the AI how much imagination it can have with your prompts. For example, here's one I made at 1,250 and another one at 20,000. And you can see the artistic difference. Now, if you don't want to type in the prompts every single time you're typing an image, you can tell the bot to remember your preferences. So you put in forward slash and then prefer suffix. And then you type in dash dash AR space 16 by nine and press enter. It is going to remember that and it's going to add that to every single one of your images. Now all of your images are going to be portrait. You can also play around with the settings by pressing forward slash and then going to settings. And that is going to give you a bunch of options to choose from. Midjourney 1, 2 and 3. These are the algorithms they used to use. These are the older algorithms and these are the later algorithms. So MJ3 is the one that you should usually go through then style low style medium style high and very high is what we talked about earlier so you can set that here and you can see adds s 
1250 or s20,000. You can manually change that too. So let's go keep it at medium. Then half quality base quality or high quality is just the quality at which it renders. Uh, you can go with half to save some of your credits or you can go with high quality to really emphasize the quality. But in my experience, it doesn't do that much. In fact, here is an image that was generated at half the quality and another one that was generated at two times the quality. And just for the fun of it, let's bump it up to 60,000 style to see what it gives us. And then there's the fast mode or relax mode. This is for paid customers, of course. Uh, fast mode will require you to use your credits while relax modes doesn't use any credits, but it takes longer for the image to process. And then there is a public or private mode. Private mode is not available. If you click on it, it's going to actually tell you that you need to pay $20 extra for your images to be private. However, there are ways to delete your images through reactions. Say, for example, we don't like this image of the kittens. We add a reaction and we add the X and that is going to delete that image. There's a few more. You can add a star to favor it or you can ask for an envelope which is going to send you four individual files of the preview renders instead of one containing four. And to conclude the settings, we're going to go forward slash info. And that is going to give us all the information about our account and how many GPU hours we have used already. Yeah. Now, those are the settings in a nutshell. There are a lot more I'm going to be linking down in the description below if you want to see all the detailed settings. Now, let's get to the really good stuff. It's finding your style. On screen now, you're going to see three different images with the exact same prompt. But in the end, I said in the comic style of Jamie Hewlett, in the fantastical style of Jim Woodring, and for hyper-realistic style that your image looks like it was a photo, you can type in hyper-realistic, Unreal Engine, or Octane Render, and it will achieve photo-like results. You can ask the AI to draw something in a specific style, for example, pencil sketch, watercolor, or oil paints. Also, you can ask for something like cartoon style or film, vintage film, that kind of thing. But it also helps if you know some artists, for example, Picasso or Van Gogh, or you can say anime style or hyper-realistic fantasy, and it will give you results based upon your requests. You can also have a look at the community feed and see what other people are typing to copy their style. This is midjourney.com forward slash app, and it's the community feed. Here you'll see a lot of images done by other artists. For example, this is a very nice one. And this one is in the style of Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. That's great. Um, here's something that I like. Um, this one is uh, dramatic composition, dramatic lighting, hyper-realistic, ultra detailed. Uh, these are the kind of things that you'd want to add to your um, prompts in order to get something like this. Uh, here's a good one. Um, this one has been, uh, he specified a style of artist. So Francois Schuiten by Dan Hiller, uh, Paul Pope, and so on. That defines the style of the artists and AI is going to try to recreate it in that same style. Here's a nice one. Uh, this one is just simply anime style, or I presume this is something of Art Nouveau. See, Art Nouveau, background painted by Alfonso Mucha. And what you can do here is you can go ahead, click on these three dots, copy prompt, and open up your Discord and paste in the prompt. But let's not copy it exactly. And instead of a woman, let's add a peacock. I'm also gonna add another command, dash dash video, so that we can see this come to life. And here is the final result that I've chosen. The way that I got the video is that I went to where these four tiles are and I added a reaction of the envelope. This gave me the four individual images and at the bottom it gave me the video. If you look a little bit higher, it also has a link to the video which you can download. And lastly, I'd like to share with you how to remove certain elements which you might not want in your picture. For example, if you type in the word pirate, it's most likely going to have a hat, a beard, maybe an eye patch. So the way to remove those is type dash dash no, and then followed by the word that you want to remove. So you can see by typing that prompt, I was able to remove the hats and the beards. But there's an even better way to do it using weights. Every word can be weighted to be either important, normal, or not important. And this is done by double colons. So colon, colon, assigned to a number. One for normal, two for important, and minus one for not important at all. So uh, pirate, colon, colon, two, we want that in the image. Then uh, hat, colon, colon, minus one, not important. And then beard, colon, colon, minus one, also not important. 
Well, that just about sums up everything in under 50 minutes. I now dub thee a professional AI content creator. <laughs> If you want to support me, check out in the description below, there's going to be a link to the Envato Elements Marketplace. It's a great place to get some designer elements which you can layer on top of this AI generated art, such as fonts, uh, grainy patterns or color correction and so on, to give it that extra level of... <clears throat> uh, that way you'll be supporting me and my channel and of course my cat. And I wish you guys an awesome experience generating AI art and creating something new. This has been Nick for Can of Art. Cheers.